What are you talking about green gardening? There's no green gardening. Forget you and your green gardening. That's not happening. Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Hethwin and today we are back to play some more of the 100 baby challenge with our second matriarch, Josephine. Our last episode was absolute and pure chaos. And I asked all of you your opinions on perhaps changing up the rules on when we are able to age up infants. And First, I want to thank everybody who left a comment and gave me their feedback on that. I really appreciate that quite a bit. It did help a lot. So thank you so much for all of that. At the time that I'm recording this video, it's pretty much unanimous that you are all in agreement with me that we need to change these rules or I'm going to completely lose my mind. And let me just say thank you. Thank you for confirming with me that this is absolutely nuts completely and absolutely nuts. So with that said, I am going to remove the link to the challenge rules down below so that there isn't any confusion and nobody like clicks on it and looks at it and is like, well, hey, why aren't you doing it this way? Feel free in the future going forward to Google the 100 baby challenge. That will give you some rules and give you an idea. I also talk quite a bit about what we need to do to age kids up as we're playing. So you shouldn't be too confused about what's going on. If you do happen to have any questions though, pop a comment down below and I'll respond to you and let you know kind of what I'm doing. So just to bring everybody up to speed, if you haven't been watching, I've been playing with the rules that were posted by the original creator of the challenge, who goes by Snarky Witch, I believe. And when they updated the rules for infants and growing together, they stated that in order to age up your infant, they had to reach the pincher grass milestone, as well as the crawling milestone. And they also needed to try three like smushed baby foods and one finger food before you could age them up. The reason this was such a problem and an issue was that both of those milestones happen really late in the milestone process. So it takes a long time and a lot of effort just to get one infant aged up. We currently have four infants in our household, so getting them aged up before they were going to age up automatically, it just wasn't going to happen. Now, a lot of other simmers out there are playing with a rule proposed by Dr. Gluon, which suggests that you can age your infant up once you have two milestones in each of the categories. I think the only exception to that is like the life category because that one's a little bit weird, but like social, fine motor, gross motor. Once you've got two of those, you are good to age that kid up. And so those are the rules that we are going to be switching with and going with going forward because part of this challenge is to be fun, right? And while you all might enjoy me watching me suffer and experience a whole bunch of chaos, I don't necessarily enjoy that. So if you like the series and you want it to keep going, we are going to change these rules. Again, though, I do want to say thank you to everyone who left their feedback. I do really appreciate that. So thank you so much. And I'm going to stop talking and babbling and we're going to hop over here into our game and see where we're at. I actually think we may be able to age up the current oldest set of twins, Matthew and Aria. I think that they may be there. We're going to take a real quick look before we do anything else and see if they are there. All right, so Aria has two fine motor, two, she actually does have two firsts, two gross motor, only life, life is the one we're not going to count with this because it's not one that we necessarily have a whole lot of control over. Firsts though, we can do two. Okay, she does need one more gross motor, and she's got four social. So she needs one more gross motor. Let's take a look at Matthew. Matthew is in far better shape than she is. So I think what we'll do right off the bat is maybe... Oh, she needs to sleep. All right, as soon as we can, we are going to have her do some tummy time and try and get that next gross motor skill sorted out for her so we can get her aged up. All right, so Josephine is our current matriarch. Um, she is in her second trimester of pregnancy. So we have a little bit of ways to go with her before she's going to have her next baby. She's crying right now. She's feeling very sad. She's having a pregnancy mood swing. So she's kind of having a moment. Oh, and Ruby has woken up and is stinky and I think needs to eat. Let's have Josephine come in right off the bat and feed her 
Our, our oldest child is Curtis. He is a child and he is in school. He is still a C student. So we are working on his school project to get that done. It looks like Ruby likes being held. So Ruby and Amber are our youngest set of infants and Ruby is a vampire. Loves being held is not the greatest uh, quirk, but it'll have to do. Our second child is Alyssa. She just became a child, so she has some work to do before she can age up into a teenager. For children to age up into a teenager, they need to have an A in school and they need to have high confidence. So Curtis has that. Okay, this person just said, hey neighbor, do I hear the sizzle of something broken in there? Oh dear, would you like help with that? I'm a bit of a handy simp. Um, yes. Yes, I would. Please come help me fix whatever it is that's broken because I don't have time to do it. I would appreciate that very much. Thank you. Thank you. So the youngest set of twins are Ruby and Amber. And when looking at their milestones, uh, Ruby has one fine motor, one first, no gross motor, and two social. And Amber only has a social milestone. So this is what I mean, how the other way it was just going to be completely impossible to accomplish. Uh, Ruby needs a bath, so let's come and give Ruby a bath. Oh, Ruby also frequently hiccups. My hope is that once Curtis becomes a teenager, it will be a lot easier to deal with these infants because like he'll be able to help. Okay, who are you? Can you be a baby donor? Ranji Misipika. Wait, we already know him, don't we? Yeah, we tried to we tried to have a baby with Ranji, but the romance was just not working between him and Josephine. So we kind of had to abort that plan. Okay, did Ruby get her bath? No. Oh, she's getting her bath right now. Okay. So Josephine is in giving Ruby a bath. Things are messy. Ruby is tired. Amber just had her first blowout great. We uh we have the money making trash can, which is kind of completely inessential because otherwise we would be really, really suffering and struggling. There's no way we would be doing very well at all. So Ruby has unlocked the first bath and the first bubble bath milestone, and Amber has unlocked the coup milestone. Alright, come put Ruby down. Come on, Josephine. Go put Ruby down. Put Ruby down. Not in the bathroom. Okay, Curtis finished his extra credit work, so that's really good. You know what? We need to get we need to get something in this bathroom. We really do need a second functional bathroom at this point. There are too many people in this house, and with the need to like actually bathe infants, we need to get this sorted. So we're just gonna real quickly basically replicate the bathroom that we already have. Except that instead of getting a tub, we're just gonna get a shower. For this one and then that way they can have a shower all right we've got our second bathroom which like i said good because that way josephine can like be bathing the infant and then if somebody else needs to use the bathroom they can like go in and use the bathroom and it'll be it'll be good amber needs to eat and needs a bath so we are going to quickly feed amber and then give amber a bath oh this bathroom is in really rough shape Josephine is miserable. She's having back pain from being pregnant. She's hungry. There's a dirty diaper. She's tired. Everything is grungy. She needs to have some fun. She's not really doing very well. Okay, why don't we come and put Amber down right here so she can potentially like look at things and work on like a f fine motor skill. Josephine, we have got to get to use the bathroom. And she needs- oh no, Matthew's very hungry, someone's going to take him away. What are you talking about green gardening? There's no green gardening. Forget you and your green gardening, that's not happening. No. Josephine's now in her third trimester. We're gonna buy a sleep replacement. Josephine needs some help. She's gonna pass out. We need to get these toddlers aged up. Josephine's gonna drink a sleep replacement and then we really need to work on these infants and get them ready to be aged up. Okay, sleep replacement is consumed. So that's a good start. We need to feed Matthew so he doesn't get taken away. Aria also needs to be fed. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, let's get, get Matthew squared away. Uh, we can let's see. All right, let's put this little like toy down that uh, Catherine had knit. And then Matthew can play with that a little bit because he needs some fun. So we'll put Matthew down here. And then we will feed Aria, and then we'll do tummy time with Aria. Hopefully then Aria gets uh, that last skill that she needs, and everything will be good. 
All right, we are getting in some tummy time. We're hoping for another gross motor milestone for Arya, and then we can age that set of twins up into toddlers and maybe make life easier. Yes, okay, Arya has rolled over onto her back, and that, I do believe, gives us all of the milestones that she needs. Yes, perfect. It is age up time. I don't care if they're pooping their pants. We're aging everybody up. All right, let's age her up quickly, and then we'll age up Matthew, and then perhaps they might be able to get a bath. But let's get them aged up at least, and then they're kind of going in the right direction as far as being toddlers, and I can breathe. Okay, so Arya has aged up. Oh no. Oh dear. She's picked up the unhappy infant trait. Arya had an unfortunate start to life. As a result, expect her to be a little more headstrong and defiant. Awesome. Great. Swell. We love to see it. Okay, she is a silly toddler. All right, now we will go and age up Matthew. And then Josephine has got to get some sleep. Like, she has got to sleep. Matthew has also aged up with an unhappy infant. Like, he has, like, so many milestones. Maybe it's because he didn't get, like, enough attention. All right, he, like, let's see what kind of infant he's going to be. A charmer. Okay. He is a charmer. We are going to give them a makeover. So we have made over the toddlers. Here is Aria as a, a little a toddler. Uh, she developed a little bit of a birthmark as she aged there on her forehead. So she has a little birthmark. And then this is her twin, Matthew. And so we finally have them as toddlers, which was very needed. They both need baths in like a major way too. Like major, major, major way. But Josephine needs to eat, so let's have her come and eat. These two can, like, socialize with each other. Okay, Ruby unlocked the laugh milestone, so that's good. And Arya and Matthew both have the movement skill. So we'll get them kind of communicating with each other a little bit and working on getting their communication skill up. Okay, Ruby has unlocked the grab milestone. Very good. Ruby's not very happy because she's woken up. So she is not excited about that. All right, let's have Josephine come and read Arya to sleep because she is a little bit tired. Matthew is doing a little bit better, but maybe we'll have him come up and do the slide. And Josephine's reached level nine of the parenting skill, which is good. We want that because she'll be able to do super efficient baby care to newborns and to infants, which will be huge. Wait, you're not... I didn't tell you to give him a bath. I told you to go to the bathroom and then put Arya to bed. I know he's stinky and kind of needs a bath, but like, that's not the priority at the moment. Arya's in here though babbling at Amber, which is good. You like to see that. And the infants are in here kind of babbling at each other too, which will be really helpful. All right, Matthew needs a potty. So we are going to get him into potty. Uh, New family dynamics strict. We are going to say yes because it tends to make the kids listen better. And if anything, Josephine needs these kids to be able to listen to her so that they do what they need to do to advance themselves. <laughs> All right, Matthew has obtained the potty skill. We're going to read him to sleep and then move on to the infants. Oh, Alyssa has a loose tooth. She should expect to lose it soon. Wiggling the tooth and brushing her teeth can help speed up the process, or Alyssa can bite the bullet and pull the tooth out. So that's fun that Alyssa has a loose tooth. Curtis does as well. Very, very nice. All right, I guess, yeah, feed Aria, then read Matthew to sleep. We need to get some gross motor milestones going for Ruby, and I'm assuming for Amber as well. Oh, Amber needs some fine motor too. That's probably because Amber keeps getting put in places where she can't, like, interact with stuff. So we'll have to get that going. Curtis is up, and so is Alyssa. Okay, Curtis didn't do his homework, so he better get that done before school, because they both have school in an hour. All right, Alyssa and Curtis are heading off to school. Josephine finally has, like, her fun back up. Let's have her come use the bathroom before she pees herself. Okay, Amber has unlocked the lift the head milestone which is great. That's her first gross motor milestone. All right, Josephine is getting a call from the school. 
turn the sheet around. A teacher caught Curtis looking at another student's test during class and sent him to the office. I think that Josephine is strict with her kids. And so I think she would, since he was like really actively cheating and trying to like look at another kid's paper, she's going to say he should fail the test. Which actually worked out well because that means his responsibility is in the responsible range. And that is a good thing because we need that as a teenager. Okay, Amber has unlocked the laugh milestone. Alright, Josephine, why don't you come and put Amber down right here and she can work on some grow or some fine motor. And then we'll need to wake up Aria before she poops her pants. Alright, it was a good thing we put Amber there because she has unlocked the reach milestone. Yeah, Aria is gonna need to go potty and then eat and then have a bath. So let's wake her up. Ooh, Aria loves wake up time. Okay, that's not a bad quirk. That's not a bad one at all because then she'll actually be happy when she wakes up. So we're gonna get her pottying and then we're gonna give her a bath and then she can get something to eat. And Ruby has now woken up and has unlocked the blow raspberry milestone. That's kind of cute. All right, we've got Aria going potty, which is very good. Then we will give Aria a bath and let her eat. How's Matthew doing? He still needs a bath. He's getting kind of hungry, but he's okay for right now. We can leave him sleeping. Josephine is in her third trimester, and I've got, like, no idea when this baby is going to be born. I think we decided that... Orlando Scott is going to be the next baby donor because he was kind of her sweetheart while she was in high school. And so it does kind of make sense that that would be who she has a baby with at some point. All right, Ruby's unlocked the Babel milestone. The children have come home from school. Let's see. Curtis is now a B student. Thank goodness. Oh, thank goodness for that. Let's get them both doing their homework like right away. And then they can work on, like, other things for them. They can maybe both help out around the house, like, cleaning things up. And then maybe we can finish giving Aria her bath. Like, give her a full bath so she's actually clean. Matthew, we will wake up so he can come and eat. Okay, Matthew has the good appetite quirk, so he's always ready for food. Curtis needs some fun. We Let's have him come and play chess. He likes to play chess once for his fun and maybe we could also have Alyssa do that as well they could both play chess together and then once Matthew's done going potty maybe we can actually get him clean I'm feeling a little bit better like we're kind of getting back on top of things of course then Josephine's gonna go into labor and we're gonna have a newborn and then everybody's we're gonna have a screaming kid again but for right now things are not quite as hectic and chaotic as they have been and I'm gonna take that Oh, he is so close to level two of his potty skill where he can just go on his own and then we don't have to stress about him as much. All right, we will get him in the bath. Get him clean. Oh, he hates being carried. I think Curtis can... Oh, he's taking a shower. But I think he can do extra credit work. Yeah, he can because he has a B. Alyssa doesn't have that same option. So after he's done with his little shower, let's have him do some extra credit work. See if we can get him to an A. Okay, Matthew is pretty squared away, so this is good. Now maybe Josephine can take care of some of her own needs. Uh, let's make some dinner. We're running kind of low on food in the fridge, so I think making some dinner would probably be a good thing. Let's make some grilled cheese for dinner for everybody. We have a couple of very stinky infants. <laughs> oh, holy cow. Oh my goodness. Curtis has reached mental level nine. He is like zooming through that. Look at him go. It's good, though, because, well, okay, maybe it's not good because we don't, he doesn't need to age up out of a teenager and move out of the house, like, super fast because we kind of need the help. He doesn't need to, like, be all ready to go. Although, if Alyssa gets close, then, you know, as long as we keep what, oh my gosh, Matt just came up and kicked Alyssa. He's aggressive. That's not good. Matthew. Oh, I hear crying. Someone's crying. I think it's Amber. Okay, Josephine, oh, you need to pee. Quick, go pee. No, don't check on the kid. Go pee. Don't eat either. Go, go pee. Matthew is, I don't know what he's doing. Here, why don't you come slide? Curtis has finished his extra credit work. Actually, can he come out here? Okay, he can sell all of the plants that are out here because he's able to do that. He can't spray for weeds, though, so that'll have to wait. 
And then he can eat too. Okay, Josephine's gone into labor. She's over here doing some tummy time with Amber, trying to see if we can get another a milestone with Amber, and she has gone into labor. So we'll finish this tummy time, and then we're gonna have to go have baby number 28. Ooh, okay, Amber's rolled over onto her back. So that was worth waiting for. And now let's go have the baby at the hospital. So this baby donor is Alicia Chopra. We met her when we went over to the Vitors. She lives with the Vitors, but she's not a vampire. So that is this baby donor. Orlando Scott will be the next baby donor, but this is gonna give us a full house. So we'll have a little bit of time before we have to like get her pregnant again. All right, we are at the doctor. The youngest ones have had a, headed off to daycare. All right, and it is labor time. Josephine is in labor, about ready to deliver this baby. And it is a girl. So we've had another girl. And I was going back and looking at some na baby name suggestions from the comments. We are going to name this one Faith. So we now have Faith Larson. And it is just a single birth because that is all we had space for in the house. And that is just fine. I am completely okay with just one baby. And that takes our baby total to 28. 28 babies. Oh, cool. Okay, Matthew reached level two of the potty skill while he was at daycare. We love that. That means he's going to be able to go potty on his own, which is a huge bonus. Okay, everybody is back. Josephine is, of course, in her hospital gown. Where did the baby go? All right, let's put the baby in a better spot. All right, Josephine needs some food. So let's let her get something to eat real quickly. And then let's see, Curtis, it's one o'clock in the morning. You two, I know you're not like super tired, but you do need to go to bed. Okay, you need to eat as well. So you come eat. You can stand to come eat, which I think you're going to do autonomously. And then we'll sort out the infants once Josephine has had a little bit of food. Wait, why is Amber all the way over here? How did Amber get, like, why is this where Amber is? Who put Amber here? This is not good. This is terrible. Come pick this kid up and bring her in. Yeah, bring her inside. Why is she just laying on the sidewalk in the middle of nowhere? Like, the house is all the way over here. How did an immobile infant end up on the sidewalk by the river, no less? Yeah, come get that kid. Awesome. Arya's a picky eater. She was a picky eater as an infant, though, so I guess it's not entirely surprising. All right, Josephine is bringing Amber back home. How Amber ended up way over there in the first place, I don't know. Okay, Amber needs to get one more fine motor skill. So when we get back, we'll have Josephine feed her. And then we will put her down on a playmat. She's probably going to fall asleep, but then when she wakes up at least, she'll be able to like reach for that and do that and hopefully get that fine motor skill up. Ruby is sleeping here on the floor, so that's that's fine. What are okay, she needs gross motor as well, so we needed to get some tummy time going with Ruby. And now Ruby's awake. <laughs> One of them is always crying. Someone is always, always crying. It's crazy. Okay, Arya's reached the thinking level two. So we love that. Okay, Ruby has unlocked the lift the head milestone, so she just needs one more gross motor and then she can age up. <laughs> Poor Josephine is like gotta pee really bad, but she's gotta take care of this infant. So hopefully she can deal with that. Okay, Alyssa and Curtis have school pretty soon. All, right, all is relatively quiet. We are going to let Josephine sleep a little bit because these the toddlers are doing okay. They're over here talking to each other. I mean, Aria does have a dirty diaper, but she's fine at the moment. We're gonna let them just talk. Amber unlocked the Babel milestone. Good for Amber. And the Grab milestone, which I think, isn't that, is that everything? Yeah, so she's got, so Amber has two fine motor, two first, two gross motor, and, well, four socials, but she's got everything that she needs. Ruby just needs to get one more gross motor. And then she'll be good to go. Let's see, how is Amber doing? Amber is like okay as far as needs go. We're gonna see if we can let Josephine get her energy bar totally full. And Matthew has reached movement level three, which is also really good. So he's got his first toddler skill taken care of. 
Faith is awake. We need to find out. Let's find out what's wrong with Faith. And then we can go and tend to Amber a little bit. Matthew is almost ready for bed, so we could also potentially put him to bed. Alright, she wants attention, so let's cuddle her and rock her. And maybe since we're here and tending to her, we might as well feed her and kind of top things off in that department. And then maybe we can give Reed Matthew to sleep once we're all done. Oh, Ruby is awake, so we can do tummy time with Ruby. There's so much to do. Oh my, this looks to be quite a problem for jo Okay, Josephine, let's reset you. All right, let's try that again. Let's read Matthew to sleep and get his imagination skill up. Okay, why did Arya wake up? Arya just woke up. What is wrong with you? What is happening to your arms? This is so cursed. Okay, she's broken. All right, can we read him to sleep in this bed? Does that bed work? Or is that bed cursed too? Why are you going out? What are you doing? That's not- Oh my gosh, this isn't what I told you to do. Everyone scream- No, my gosh, just do what I told you to do. I don't even know what is happening. <laughs> like, why is this what's happening? Every- All of the small ones that can cry are crying. It's crazy. Arya is really stinky and dirty and gross. Let's- Okay, let's give Arya a bath. That's like one thing. Let's just start start there. Give Arya a bath. Matthew is eating. Arya is stinky. We'll give Arya a bath. And then we can potty train her maybe. Maybe. Maybe potty train her. Or, or everyone's just going to ignore me. Okay. Uh, potty train Arya. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's see if we can get her to potty level two so she can go on her own. And then they both can. All right. Matthew is going to sleep. Good for Matthew. He also has to go to the bathroom, but maybe he can sleep a little bit and then go to the bathroom. And then we'll potty train her once her bath is done and everything is chaotic and crazy. We're not even going to deal with what's happening on this side of the house because everybody's screaming. All right. Our Alyssa and Curtis are home from school. Curtis is an A. All right. Before we do anything else, we are aging Curtis up because Curtis has an A in school and he also has high confidence so first things first come and blow out these candles curtis and become a teenager and save me because we need help all right curtis has aged up he is a teenager and he has earned the high self-esteem trait so good we like that um they become confident and they're less likely to develop a fear of failure so we love that very much so good for curtis we love even more that Curtis is now a teenager and can make our life a lot easier. We are going to randomize our aspiration between 1 and 16 to determine what his aspiration is going to be. So using our random number generator between 1 and 16, we got a 9, which is location. And then we will be randomizing again between 1 and 6, and we got a 1 which is perfectly pristine. I mean, that's fine. All right, and then let's randomize his next trait. He is adventurous. So he's got a perfectly pristine aspiration and an adventurous trait. Good for Curtis. Now we need to give him a makeover because he has made some very interesting choices. So let's give Curtis a makeover and then we will probably call the episode here. Right, so this is Curtis all made over as a teenager. He is ready to go. As we said before, he is perfectly pristine. He is now adventurous and he is going to be such a huge help in this challenge. We are so thankful to have Curtis here. I think he turned out good. He, he's pretty good looking. Olivia Kim Lewis is his baby donor. So we're going to Get him back, get him going. We've got a teenager, thank goodness. That's gonna make things way easier. And we are gonna end the episode here. So first teenager in the house, I'm hoping and I'm feeling optimistic that that's gonna like smooth things out with the infants and the newborns. We certainly have a lot happening. We have two toddlers, we have two infants, we have a newborn. There's a lot going on. So Curtis and Curtis being able to do things is going to be a huge help. Alyssa shouldn't be too far behind him. Arya and Matthew are going to be a little bit delayed because of the rule switch. 
And I think in the next episode, we will be able to age Ruby and Amber up into toddlers as well because they're we just need one more to get one more milestone and they'll be good to go. So I feel like going forward, this is going to go a lot better. It's still going to be extremely chaotic and a lot more involved than the 100 Baby Challenge before. But I think this will, at least will make things feel manageable because the other way did not feel manageable. So thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video, please do like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!